and welcome back. Now I thought I'd take a slightly different approach today and just go through a couple of things that arrived in the post that you might be seeing a bit later and then go through some of the uh, questions we've had on the forum about the equipment that you need as a beginner what should you get and what shouldn't you get. Okay first things first now these are quite interesting <clears throat> these are four watt LEDs flat got them from Banggood I'll put something up on the screen in a minute about that. Now I misread the description because I thought these were on some kind of aluminium heatsink already and they are on some kind of aluminium in fact there's one here that's been detached so as you can see it's on an aluminium base yes but that's not a heat sink um, so I wired this up thinking oh that should be okay ha huh. was I wrong it's all okay for about 10 minutes and after that it gets hotter and hotter and hotter so hot in fact you can't even touch it so what I've done then is um, got some of these little heat sinks which just happen I don't know if it's coincidence but they just happen to fit on there really nicely so um, you need to adhere this somehow to here and that's what this stuff is this is thermal, thermal adhesive um, so you cut it into the right shape as you can see I've taken one out already and uh, stick that on there it's a bit like the stuff you use for CPUs and PCs from years gone by anyway it's double sided so you stick one on there clean it up first of course with, with meths so clean, clean this up with meths first and the other side of that as well Put some of this thermal um, adhesive which is available generally on ebay and places like that and then just stick the two together now just to experiment i actually uh, put one together here as a lamp they were in fact intended for um video ed editing you know lights while i'm camera shooting and all that but frankly it's more trouble than it's worth i got a proper light at the end of the day so here's one i've bonded it on put a ropey old connector on it but it does work let's um, switch that on there we are. So as you can see, that's a 12 volts power supply. It's uh, reasonably bright, 400 lumens out of that. So that's not bad. And of course, I was hoping to get uh, four on here up. That would be 1600 lumens, and that would be quite bright. But actually, the one I bought, um, which is only about 15 quid, I think it was about, is about 1500. Anyway, so uh, I haven't wasted these yet. I, I will use the rest of them in various things. But that's uh, that's what that one turned out to be. Now the other thing that turned up in the post <coughs> a little while ago now, I don't know if you can really make out, I'm not going to open it up, there's thousands of bits in here, look it's a proper it's a proper project. But if you can see that green circuit board, you can probably make out it's roughly in the shape of a Christmas tree and therein lies the clue. It's um, a, a 3D Christmas tree, so there's two of those triangular bits, I believe there's two that go together somehow. So they slot together and then there are some um, LEDs on there that light up but it's all a bit boring really they don't do very much so I was thinking I could build this much later in the year it's nowhere near Christmas yet it's not even spring really um, and then stick an Arduino somewhere on the back a nano or something like that and do something fancy with the lights I don't know that's a that's a project for the future though Another reason to subscribe to this channel, you see, so you get to see these things as soon as they're made. I'll probably try and aim to get this one done around about October time, maybe, something like that. So, stand by for that. I've got to work out what I'm going to do with the Arduino bit first. I'm afraid filming one-handed is not my forte. Normally I've got a proper camera in my studio for this. Right, now, let's um, move on to beginner's tools. Loads of people say, what should I buy? Do I need this? Do I need a Cray computer? Do I need this, that and the other? Well, no you don't really. There are some basic tools of course. Um, if we look over here, there's uh, a pretty standard soldering iron. I mean, this I think this is an Antex or something. Um, but, you know, 15 watts, something really light. I'm all to the point. The, the point, if this is going to focus in on it, has got to be small and fine. So, um, because you want to get into those little tiny tracks <clears throat> and a holder of course to hold it with oh now this is useful apart from the solder obviously fine solder not the thick stuff this is um, 0.7 millimeter solder look and uh, this isn't this um, lead free stuff either it's it's what I call proper solder because I can't work with the other stuff it's got too high a melting point so apart from the solder this stuff is worth its weight in gold. Okay, this is um, a trademark solder mop, but what in fact it is, is desoldering wick. And if you look at this stuff here, you can see that it is very wick-like. And uh, you put this on top of a, a mistakenly soldered joint, 
on top of it and then with your soldering iron <clears throat> you just press down on it and move the wick across the joint as it sort of all flows in and what happens is this this wick takes off all the solder that you've put onto the joint and allows you to remove a component so much better than anything else I've tried solder pumps and suckers and good knows what else but this stuff I guess I make a lot of mistakes, I don't know. No, not, not really. I mean, this is um, just worth its weight in gold, though, rather than trying to destroy a circuit board, heating it up 20 times to get a component out. This is great. I've got two more on order as well, as I'm running a bit low. You can get it in different um, thicknesses. This is, what does it say there? It says 1.5 mil. I think I've got a 1 mil coming and a slightly thicker one as well. That's from Banggood. I'll show you the pictures of those as well. So... Other equipment then. So, multimeters. How many people don't have a multimeter when they're working with Arduinos? It surprises me really. Now, a basic sort of electronic multimeter might look something like this. Um, I'm not suggesting you get this one particularly. You can get them from about five quid, but you do want them with a fair range so you can measure um, resistances. There's a little, see that little sign down there? That means it will beep if you put the two together. It measures diodes. There's all number of things it can measure in there, which is really, really useful when you're measuring stuff for Arduinos. Um, now that's not an expensive one. You can get them cheaper, and of course you can get them hundreds of pounds as well. Now here's a, a really old one, actually. Now the, uh, the people are slightly longer in the tooth. No disrespect to all sort of over this. This is um, a mechanical multimeter with a, with a real clonk, clonk, clonk switch and everything. I mean, it's, uh, it's really a work of art, though. N thousand ohms per volt, whatever it used to be, with a mirror scale. Look, so you can get it, and believe it or not, this still works. And I'll tell you for why. Sometimes using this, which I don't hardly ever use, but when I do, it's a better bet than this jobby at the back, or indeed this bench one, which I use all the time now. It's even better than using that. And why? Because this responds instantly. Even if it doesn't show you the full reading, say you're measuring a, a pulse of maybe a quarter of a second, you'll see this needle kick. And you think, ah oh, yes, I can see that something's coming out of there. Neither this one, nor this one, responds quickly enough. It just displays some nonsense on it, well, a bit like it's doing now, really. Going down to minus two and things. I mean, it's, I mean what's, what's all this? I mean, we haven't got anything plugged in. So, sometimes the old mechanical multimeter really is worth its weight in gold. Um, now, of course, if you're after waveforms and pulse width modulation and whatnot, you may very well invest in a, an oscilloscope like this one here. Um, let me turn this one on. So, there we are. Now, this wasn't particularly cheap, and it was a sort of a, well, it was a long-term investment, really. Of, um, I thought very long and hard about it. But it, um, you've probably seen a couple of these traces on some of the videos I've done, especially pulse width modulation and stuff. Um, having said that, unless you're really into electronics and stuff, it's probably a little step too far. Unlike this bench power supply. Now this is only um, a 2.5 amp, 0 to 30 volts. But um, as you can see, it's a pretty solid affair there. And it really is worth its weight in gold. I use this one all the time as well. It's got current limiting as well. So <clears throat> if anything goes wrong, that little light there comes up and uh, it tells you how much current it's trying to sink at the moment so you set it maybe to I don't know, 20 milliamps or 30 milliamps and it will stop at that point and that light will come up and you think hang on a minute I'm only connecting a, an LED up it shouldn't be taken anywhere near that so it stops you burning out your Arduinos before you know it. Um, what else can I show you that's uh, useful? Well a selection of components now here you'll see now here I can use my zoom at the top there, for example, there's a whole collection of resistors, the entire resistor range, which I've had for about 20 years. Well, not the same collection, obviously I've used most of them. But I keep refilling it every now and again. You can buy bulk purchases on eBay very cheaply. Quarter watt, at least 5%. Sometimes you can get 1% resistors, but they're not really needed for Arduino type work. Uh, and then below that, just a, a random selection of bits and pieces. But over here, now this is the Arduino, or at least micro controller store all sorts of things over here um, as you might be able to read them there's power supplies block connectors there's uh, crimp housings headers these things which are really worth their weight in gold if you 
got an Arduino board and you need some headers to solder on. You can get the multicoloured as well, look, red and yellow. Really useful to differentiate between different things. Um, what else? Over here, well, there's another whole store of stuff in here. Uh, not all of it is electronics or Arduino related, but uh, putting projects together, of course, you need screws and bolts and nuts, which is what this one's about. This one's going to be my replacement Arduino store, or at least electronics store. It's got all sorts of uh, things in here that you wouldn't find. I mean, here's one, for example, full of sounders and beepers and whatnot with the different voltages. You think, look, 12, 6, that's one, 3, is that? Yeah, that's a 3 volt sounder. And of course, if you don't have these things to hand while you're playing about, it's very difficult to. Um, get your project off the ground. So there we are, a few little things that uh, you need. <clears throat> this little tray by the way, which I have on top of my workbench, this little tray came from Ikea and it was only like a fiver and these legs click it, click in and then you can pull them back out again just a centimetre or so and they fold underneath. That's a folding tray, jolly useful and brings the stuff up as you can see here to sort of you know, standing uh, height so your soldering and all that doesn't have to be done sort of crouched down over this over this lower bench down here and you can put stuff underneath as well and of course i do have a laptop here uh, and a monitor but it's probably going a step too far for most people but as i used to build pcs for a living i had a few as you were might say spare so one's down here right um that's probably about it for now um keep tuned for more information about these uh, LEDs and what I'm going to do with them, apart from this one here that's already been implemented and certainly that Christmas tree one. Oh, there's a couple of other things actually I forgot to say. If anybody knows what this is, well, you're a better person than me. Right, now in my li <coughs> little box of uh, supplies, there's this little thing. Four wires, uh, a bit of metal. Let me just take that out. and say one-hand operation is never a good idea. So there's a bit of metal, a few holes in it. Uh, four wires. Have you any idea what this is? Well, if not, keep tuned for a future video and I'll explain all about that because those four wires go into um, one of these units here. It might be that one. Can't tell. I'm too close to the camera. But uh, there's all loads of future stuff coming up here. I mean, look at all these components. Some of them I've used already, some not. Okay, there we are. Well, I hope that's given you a few ideas about sort of the tools that beginners can buy, but don't go overboard. I mean, it's a bit like, you know, running a business, isn't it? You don't, you don't buy 20 trucks when you're just delivering four boxes of fruit a day. So, horses for courses, but of course you do need a soldering iron at the top of the list. You do need a multimeter. I believe I don't think you can really get away without it. You don't need a mechanical one. I don't even know if you can buy mechanical ones anymore, to be quite honest. And these sort of bench things here, great though they are, I mean I had to think really long and hard before I bought those because they are not uh, particularly cheap. I mean they're not particularly expensive either but you know it's sort of the thing how often am I going to use it. Well for me it's paid off because I do lots of electronics not just Arduinos. So that's great but it may be different for you. Okay hope that was useful. Thanks for watching. I hope you're finding these videos interesting and useful. You can leave comments down below and also click that little button that says subscribe. Okay, thanks for watching and see you in the next video.